Hi, this is Josh Morris. I'm a homestead ranger today. I'm with my wife, Chiara, and she was gracious enough to help us out today. We're doing a spring update today because we've been so busy with all the spring chores. And really, I say spring, but it's just late winter. We've just had such a warm winter, haven't we? We have. I yeah, checked you... the temperature of the ground like two weeks ago and it was already like 45 and 50. So I was like, better get on the garden. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I think almost the whole winter has been 10 to 20 degrees higher than normal, except for maybe two weeks where it was actually cold. Yeah. But I think we're going to have a lot of snakes and ticks this year. Yeah, they're going to come out pretty soon here. Yeah. Um, we'll... I try to take credit for way more than what I do around here, but the truth is that Kiata does most of the work in the raised bed gardens and the other gardens. So She's going to tell us a little bit today about what she has going on. The what, best what you... part that I have is my garlic over here that's been growing through the winter. I put this in this fall, this past fall. Just put it in the ground and forgot about it. And here it goes. A couple weeks ago, it sprouted out and now it's really taking off. So we'll have some garlic here. We put some carrots in. And here they are. Oh, As wow. You can see they're still small, but you can see right here this carrot is already oh yeah look at that that's awesome look i haven't even seen these is. man this one is so when did big. you plant these this was about october so quite a bit of time ago but they kind of do go dormant okay, so you can plant stuff even before it gets super cold like she planted these in october they went dormant and now they're like full size and we're just here in the beginning of march zone six first week of march so that's yeah. that's pretty amazing so we don't have a greenhouse that we're using right now but we don't really need that if you have a raised bed garden what you can do we made these four by eight so you could always cover it with a sheet of plywood or you can even use that blue board rigid foam yeah. because those come in four by eight sheets just like this and then another thing you can do this is called it's like a block ladder i think is what they call that but you put it in between rows of cinder blocks so you can find it at the hardware store. You just arch this over your raised bed, put your clear plastic over it, staple it, and you have like a little greenhouse. Yeah, it's a miniature greenhouse. Yeah. And I love these. They're really, really, really bendy and you know easy to find, easy to put in the ground. I have spring mix salad over there. I have chard, broccoli started, cauliflowers. Yeah, and so those are the types of things you'd recommend, I guess, when there still could be a frost. Yeah, so you're those kind of, are pretty much yeah. all cold weather. Like, I think we're, we're fully, you know, at least a month before the average um, first frost. So this is very early for us. But then again, it's been a warm, warm year. I think we have one or two days where it's supposed to be just barely below freezing in the forecast. So we'll, we'll see what we get. Yeah, and now in the raised beds, we have another uh, garden area. I already have potatoes in. And I know a lot of people, they think about St. Patrick's Day like a good day to plant uh, potatoes. But since we're so earlier this year, mine are already in. Yeah, I think St. Patrick's Day, to this me, it year. sounds like an arbitrary date. People just like, oh, potatoes, Irish potatoes, very like. But I heard you talking to your dad this morning about mm -hmm. the moon. Yeah. And so, so Chiara's family is from northern Italy. And her dad is an amazing gardener. Roberto, he's, he, he has been gardening his whole life. I mean, when he was a little kid you had to have you had to grow a lot of your own food if you wanted to eat and raise a lot of your livestock but he was talking to you this morning i mm -hmm. think about the moon what yes. what did he say was a good time to plant according to moon phases he said when the moon moon is going down yeah he said cal calente calante, calante yeah calante. so it's going that's, down yes that's it he said that's always a good time to plant stuff especially he said it's good to know about that for salad because if you plant it when the moon is growing, he said it's much easier for the salad to start going uh, to seed. So, so if the moon is getting smaller, then you want to plant your, yes. your salad and yes. your lettuce at that time? Okay. Yes. Is there anything that you want to plant when the moon is getting bigger? I think he told me uh, tomatoes. That's what he said. He said tomatoes is best to do when the, when the moon is crescente so it's getting crescente, bigger right that means growing or getting bigger okay yeah. and, an, and another tip he told me was like peas he said you can start peas in the fall okay in october so you should start your peas same thing like these carrots they will go dormant and he said in the springtime they're already two or three inches grown so as soon as, as the warm weather hits they're going to be producing right away instead of 
Okay, so this doesn't really look like much, but this is our potato patch. It's kind of been an experiment over the past couple years. Um, I built these concrete retaining walls, and then it's kind of a place where we can put all of our composted manure out of the barn. How do you think it's worked so far? It's been working pretty good. I was saying that, you know, the most important thing is having the compost ready to go. You don't want to be getting compost when it's too fresh. But planting here has been growing very nicely. And I like this area, especially because like potatoes, sweet potatoes, zucchini, all the kind of sort of uh, vegetables that takes a lot of space. Like take a zucchini plant. It might be like two and a half feet round. And so raised beds, you know, I, I did that before. I had zucchini in there, but it takes a lot of space. Right here, I can plant as much as I want. I don't have to worry about having, you know, space issues. And but if you look really closely here, you can actually see a potato that Kiara planted because she planted quite a few in here already. And wow, it's really starting to take off. Yeah, you can see all the little buds coming up. And I, I'm, I'm guessing like in another four or five days the green leaves will start popping out of the ground in greater depth and we're going to have a lot more videos coming out in the following weeks and months in greater depth so you can follow the progress but for today we're just trying to give you a quick update because it's been so busy this yeah, spring we've been busy yeah so let's go ahead and take a look at some other things on the farm <clears throat> one of the things that we really spend a lot of time on in the spring is goat marketing on your homestead you have to be able to produce some income otherwise you can't really afford to keep it moving forward so in our case, we sell a lot of show goats, and some of those show goats go to 4-H or county fair shows. And, so, and then uh, the other thing that we do is we sell a lot of breeding animals, so people get really excited in the spring about selling their goats. I like to feed hay until the grass and the vegetation has really had a chance to start. I feel like if I put cattle or goats out on the grass too early, then I'm gonna lose uh, some of that growth and some of that volume and it kind of sets the grass back further. So you'll notice even though we do have grass that's out there and it's about three or four inches tall and we have you know a lot of leaves that the goats like to eat like blackberry leaves and things like that, I still will feed hay um, probably until the grass is closer to six inches tall. And so probably within about a week, it looks like we still have warm weather coming. I will have cattle on grass and we'll start to kick the goats out and put them out on the different paddocks as well. Oh, she feels so lazy. She doesn't even want to hard, hardly get up and move. But she doesn't want to be close to me either. She's not very friendly. Here we are. We're just hanging out in the sunshine. She's everybody's friend. She's such a nice goat. We raised her on a bottle but because this time of the year, it's late winter. We didn't quite make enough square bales. And I try to save just a few in the barn. But I have this feeder that we can feed big round bales with. and. We feed probably 40 mama goats, and I think there are still like 15 or 20 kids left in there. And they'll finish this round bale probably in eight or nine days. And it's about an 800 pound uh, round bale. Weaned babies, or some of them are still in the process of being weaned, but a lot of these goats will go to start their own herd somewhere. We've actually sold the majority so far, but we still have some. and. So the girls will generally start their own herds and the boys, some of them may be a herd sire, but you don't need that many males. So a lot of them get castrated. And then from our homestead, a lot of those get sent to children that will raise them and they'll show them at the county fair. We just have third mix, like third corn gluten, cracked corn and soybean whole pellets. We get 1500 pounds of this at the time. And then every once in a while you have to figure out what to do to get your raccoons away from it. We have like raccoon visitor, left us a little gift last night. That guy looks like a big buck raccoon or like a buckoon or something. Our square bales are almost completely gone. Luckily we also make round bales, but I'd never like to see that few square bales left, but unfortunately that's all we have. So this is what we would call kind of a sacrifice paddock or a sacrifice pasture. And it's a pasture where we're not really trying to get the grass to grow really well right now. Instead, we're focusing on just having a place where the cattle can loaf around and they can eat hay without destroying an actual pasture. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the main uh, thing we have during winter that we have to watch out for. Yeah, because they can really mess up a pasture. When it gets muddy, cattle are so heavy. I mean, a lot of our brood cows or our mama cows, 
Some of them are 1,300 plus pounds. And when you put that on those little hooves, and they just kind of tromp around. Yeah. I think they say you pug up the pasture or something like that. Uh, we have actually downsized on our cattle. We've cut our, our cattle herd somewhere between uh, 30 and 40% of our cattle. We sold a lot of cow-calf pairs, so the mom and the baby together. And they're gonna go off and start their own herds in other places. So I'm pretty excited for the people that bought those, yeah. you know, if they're starting their own herds or making them bigger. Well, we had a few more calves just in the past week. We had like six calves on the ground, pretty much one every day. So oh yeah, we were missing time. them at first. Oh, yeah. where are all the calves? Because we sold all these cow-calf pairs. And then that week, right right after we sold them, we had a calf born at least every day. Yeah. There was a couple born on some days. So when the calves are born, you really need to, within the first couple of days, the easiest thing to do is go ahead and tag them, uh, vaccinate them, and you could potentially castrate them if they need to be castrated within the first two or three days. Yeah. That way you can catch them. Yeah, they're easy to catch. Yeah, because these things, <laughs> they get crazy after a few yeah. days. Once they start running, you're not catching them up. Yeah, give them a week and you're not gonna, you're not gonna get close to them. There's no way. We are feeding roughly, so per day, uh, I'd say for um, 15 to 20 brood cows, you're gonna give them 800 to 1,000 pounds of hay per day. Yeah, and you can see they're perfectly fine. Yeah. They're just happy, as happy as they can be. Yeah, so if you have a cattle ranch or a homestead, homestead like ours, you're not going on vacation. No, you're not. Yeah, you can forget that. You need to feed your animals. They're going to run away. Yeah, they're not going to, they won't put up with that, will they? No. But so we, that's one of the things that we have to do. That's a all year round, or that's a wintertime task. In the summertime, you're rotating them on grass. So regardless, summertime, you're also not going on vacation. Yeah, no. Yeah, because you have to rotate your cattle on grass. At least we, that's we how do. we run it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a management intensive setup. Um, the other thing I want to make sure that I do is make sure they have plenty of good mineral. Yes, can't forget about yeah. that. Because our cattle are grass fed. They're 100% grass fed. Um, every once in a while, you might have a group of calves that somebody wants to start on grain, um, maybe registered animals or something like that. And you might give those some grain, but for the most part, our brood cows will raise their calves and nurse their calves and they're just eating grass. So it's so important to have mineral. Yeah, it's very, very important. We used to spend a lot less on mineral. What were, per bag it was what? It was more like 25 to 30 dollars a bag yeah it was like 25 to 30 now we're paying like 40 to 45 dollars yeah. a bag and that's not just inflation that's because <clears throat> we noticed that some of the mineral uh, products that are out there for cattle are really cheap so we started spending more because we could see a big health improvement with our cattle so you want to make sure they have plenty of copper selenium and zinc in their mineral yeah you remember when the water froze over this winter yes that was ridiculous that was the most ice we've ever seen <laughs> And of course, it's the coldest time, so you're out there working on it, and your hands are freezing. That can be painful. Yeah, it can. But we got through. We got through the winter. It's late winter now. Super warm. So we're excited to show you around, and it's just been super busy. You haven't heard from us for a while, because when you get to late winter, and especially when you have 70, 80 degrees like we've had, and you're on a homestead, you should be working. Yeah, you need, you need to spend as much time outside. <laughs> Serviceberry is the first tree to bloom in our forest around here. It's a native tree and it has little tiny berries that you almost never get because the birds are so hungry. But the bees also love it. You can see bees and pollinators up there. They're going nuts over this tree. There are the peach blossoms. They're just getting ready now. Lots of peach blossoms. And we also have, yeah, pears. Pear blossoms getting started here. Some of these trees are how old, do you think? I think they're probably 15 years. Yeah, there are some that are about 15 years old. And Especially we have- the pears. Yeah. Pears are 15 year old. Pears and what else is down here? We have chestnuts, apples, peaches. So one of the tasks I'm behind on is I have to spray these pear trees for the fire blight. Yeah. They say before these buds open up, you better spray it for your fire blight. So I better hurry up because it could be like today, tomorrow. They better get sprayed in other words. But yeah, here's a chestnut. You can see it still has the little brown leaves. It doesn't mean it's dead. It just doesn't even drop the brown leaves all winter. And then the little buds will come out. 
push the brown leaves off and then they will open up. That's a big, beautiful chestnut tree. Really nice shape on that tree. Oh, wow, what do we have here? This is the Arkansas black apple that we just put in a few weeks ago. And look, there's leaves coming what out. What the first leaf of the year. And we're going to have a lot more videos coming out in the following weeks and months in greater depth so you can follow the progress. But for today, we're just trying to give you a quick update because it's been so busy this spring. Yeah, we've been busy.